If the rumors are true, this is the last Note device we'll ever see. Since Samsung started pushing foldables, I had a feeling that the Note days were numbered. Originally, the Note had this massive screen that was not found anywhere, but within a few years, you could get a big phone from any company. Suddenly, the only difference for a Note device is that it had an S Pen. And then, this year happened, the S21 Ultra can now use an S Pen. Every year, it feels like the differences between the Note line and the Galaxy S line becomes more and more blurred. And even back then, I had a feeling that this may be the last Note line that we'll see. And it seems like that is true. My name is Kevin the Tech Ninja. If you love technology videos, give it a thumbs up and hit subscribe. Let's get into it. Today's video was made possible by Trademore. Look guys, I know you love smartphones, tablets, and smart watches, and you may have a few of them sitting around that's just collecting dust. If they're in a good condition, sell it to Trademore. Trademore is a website used to buy and sell tech. What makes Trade More different is that as soon as they receive your device, you get paid. You don't need to wait for it to sell and haggle and negotiate, it's all done for you. Now as a buyer, each device is inspected so you know exactly what you're getting. Hit my links down below in the description to get started with Trade More. The Galaxy Note 20 Ultra was released in August of 2020. When it was first announced, it wasn't a phone that changed much compared to the previous version. But it had a nice spec bump. One notable thing was the 50X hybrid zoom, but beyond that, it was just another Note device. But what does a Note device mean outside having an S Pen shoved up its bezel? What is a Note device when you compare it to the Galaxy S? The common theme was the Note is just a Galaxy S with the S Pen. The Note has always been a bit more squared off and maybe had a bigger battery and sometimes it had more RAM but those differences became less apparent over time. The Note 20 Ultra is still a bigger phone with its 6.9 inch display, but it has a staggering 91% screen to body ratio. The Note 20 Ultra to me has always felt better in hand, and I do want to thank that squared off build. Although it is a large phone, it never felt unwieldy. The premium build of glass, metals, and the matte finish just made it one of the best looking phones to me, and I still feel that way. Sure, the lens on the back does protrude a bit when looking at the phone from the profile view, but I don't think this takes away from the looks or usability at all. Spec wise, this phone was at the top of the game and when you compare speeds to phones that are coming out today and then this phone, which is nearly a year old, the speeds are just not that different. This phone can still handle its own like the first day it came out. Featuring a Snapdragon 865 Plus, Quad HD display or Full HD at 120 Hz, starting with 256 gigabytes of storage and eight gigabytes of RAM. The Note 20 Ultra did also retain the SD card slot, which is shocking since most phones these days just rely on onboard or cloud storage. On the camera side of things, it has some really nice stuff too, like that 50X hybrid zoom, but also a 108 megapixel sensor for the wide angle lens, 12 megapixels for the zoom and another 12 megapixels for the ultra wide. The camera was really good as expected. Comparing it to the S20 and the S21 Ultra, there isn't much of a difference. It shines best outside with punchy colors and great dynamic range. It does struggle indoors still and sometimes it can push the image to the yellow side. Portrait mode's a little bit slow and it can use a little work compared to the Pixel and iPhone, but there aren't many cameras overall that are better than what Samsung is putting in their flagship phones. The Note does feature the S Pen and each year they add more and more features to it, but honestly, it doesn't make me wanna use it more than I currently do. And when I say that, I mean within a few weeks, I sort of forget I had an S Pen. It's not the S Pen isn't good at what it does. Maybe my workflow just doesn't demand an S Pen. And honestly, when I ask no users, majority of them are not using the S Pen either. I will say using the S Pen as like a camera remote, when you push the button, it takes a picture. That is the main feature I use the S Pen for. And that was one feature that I used a ton. Now, of course, you can sign documents, you can mark up screenshots and things like that. But at the same time, I just did that with my finger and it was completely fine. Software is one thing that Samsung has caught a lot of heat for in the past. And I still hear that narrative. Sure, they don't get the latest Android software update as soon as it comes out, but their flagship phones are not left far behind. 
When I turned this phone on to make a video, there was a pretty big update waiting for me. I mean, this update had probably over 100 fixes or changes when you take a look at the change log. And after running through all these updates with the phone since the first day I got it to now, I wouldn't say it feels like a different phone, but things do feel tighter and snappier. A lot of the minor inconvenience and minor bugs that we were seeing are actually gone with it. A lot of the things like inconsistencies in the Samsung apps, the back arrow sometimes when you press it, it thinks you're pressing it twice. All those little random bugs are gone. And some of the features that were supposedly exclusive to the S21 is now right here available on the Note 20 Ultra. I guess the point I'm making is if I was a person that used this phone every day for this whole year, I'd be very happy so far with all the updates I'm receiving and the new features that are coming down. Overall, the Note 20 Ultra is a beast of a phone, but sadly, it's too close to the S lineup. And a lot of the main reasons that people bought a Note for are no longer valid. It's time for something new as the Note provided a new experience and something we've never seen before when it first came out. Enter the foldables. The one thing I'm concerned about is the price of foldables. Currently, they're more expensive than the Note lineup has ever been. Can Samsung get the price of these foldables down to make this a mainstream phone? Or is it going to be considered a niche product still? Will the Z Fold 3 be able to store an S Pen or will the legacy of the S Pen die off? I know plenty of Note diehards. I wonder where will they go? Are they going to the S line? Or is it time for them to join the dark side and check out what Apple has been brewing up over these years? Or do they go to a foldable? I think this is gonna be a pivotal moment for Samsung because the Note fan base may not be large, they're extremely diehard, and I wonder what's gonna happen. And if you're watching this video when it came out in July, I guess we'll find out in about a month. <laughs> Anyways, guys, that's what I have for you. If you're watching this video still, make sure you hit subscribe. Anyways, guys, Kevin the Tech Ninja, have a great day. Talk to you guys later. Peace.